Ever felt like you can't move forward because the one that got away still haunts you? <laughs> On that note, how'd you guys find out that Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck got divorced? For me, it was this Instagram post that had like a million likes and 80,000 views. Other way around. And yes, seems like sane, sound advice. However, I couldn't disagree more. In many cases, getting back with your ex is an extremely healthy and necessary decision, regardless of how it pans out. So if you have been tinkering with the idea of getting back with Bobo, stick around because this video is certified self-sabotage approved. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place, all on your terms. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash shambooty to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. All right, back to the video. Now off the top, let me just say, there's a very big difference between Unex and the ex. Unex is the kind of person that you gave it a solid try with. And despite your best mutual efforts, eh. And that doesn't mean that you're not still hurt or haunted by the separation, but you really know that too much would have to be different in order to garner a different outcome. And at least one of you guys is not really up for the task. Getting back with Unex is something that I discouraged for reasons I described in this video. The trouble begins if you want more from that fruit when there is nothing left to give. And anybody who has ever found themselves ripping at the peel and squeezing the seed of a dry ass relationship knows exactly what I'm talking about. The ex is the one that you know in the depths of your spirit that you didn't really get a fair shot with. And when that happens, counterfactual thinking kicks in. Counter what? Imagine you're playing an important game of baseball and you miss the game winning catch. Now afterwards you're gonna assess, could I have caught that ball? If the answer is likely no, you could probably make peace with the loss. But if it's a yes, counterfactual thinking often kicks in. Or it could be vicarious counterfactual thinking where you feel like your teammate could have caught the ball only if. So when it comes to the ex that had you singing Brandy's almost, almost doesn't count, like counterfactual thinking usually resolves itself in one of three ways. One is acceptance through reframing the big loss as the big lesson where you're like, that really, really hurt and I'm sad that didn't work out. But if it was really meant to be, we would find it in ourselves to try again. So instead, I guess I'll just accept the pain of the present in knowing that future connections will benefit from what I have learned. The second way, my favorite way, is downward counterfactual thinking where you actually imagine that the future would have been worse had that thing worked out. For example, I am so glad that person goes to me because they were probably a serial killer. So it looks like I dodged a bullet or a chainsaw. <laughs> this is usually easiest to do in hindsight. Like when you don't get a dream job because you showed up late for the interview, but a month later you get a job that you choose to define as even more dreamy that you could have never gotten had you have showed up on time for interview number one. And the third way that I would define as fastest relief, but highest chances for future grief is distraction. You create a set of circumstances that make it near impossible for you to physically revisit the past in hopes that mentally you'll stop taking so many trips there. And honestly, this can work out completely fine, either in reality or in Delulu land through the powers of downward counterfactual thinking, whatever works. But if your distraction fails to provide satisfaction because A, that person was your shot of whiskey, never your cup of tea to begin with, or B, they're actually a just fine choice, but you're actually the problem. And wherever you go, well, there your ass is. And again, when your distraction falls through, counterfactual thinking can get turned up until it morphs into rumination. Rumination is obsessive, passive, evaluative focus that does not include coping strategies or problem solving. Think of it as the thing that your mind keeps replaying and going back to in between the things that require your focus, or unfortunately, sometimes during the things you know you're supposed to be focused on, which means, yes, your hands might be free, but all of your emotional energy is tied up. And this can become problematic when it comes to forming new romantic relationships, especially when we get into the realm of creating idealization around the ex or the relationship. And like we all learned care of Disney, comparisons between reality and fantasy rarely work out in happily ever after. Moreover, when you ruminate over a failed attempt at anything, then you likely create a fear of repeating past mistakes, which leads to self-sabotage. Because heck, if you messed up a perfect thing, well then what chance do great or even good things have? And ultimately, when you ruminate over an ex, you trap yourself in the past, which prevents healthy healing and emotional maturity from happening in the present, 
which in turn makes it very difficult for good relationships to take root for future success. It's kind of like wanting things to grow and then buying a glass house, but instead of putting the plants in there, you lock yourself. And this, in summary, is why I think it was such a good idea for Ben and Jen to ride that thing till the wheels fell off. Now, in our non-celebrity lives, I highly recommend doing whatever humanly possible to avoid this level of gamble and investment. For example, around the time I started dating my husband, my the ex came back into the picture. And after a month of basking in our destined love story glow, which was honestly so much fun. We had another month to like, look at what our actual love story in reality would look like. And then I was like, oh, not the one, the two or the three for me. Still very sweet though. But even if you don't get to that realization before deeper investments are made, I still stand by this. Popping in to show love to Squarespace, a partnership that literally keeps my YouTube channel alive, so thank you. But now let's talk about you. How can Squarespace help you to present and organize your ideas in a way that brings more meaningful business your way? Two words, Fluid Engine. With Fluid Engine, the next generation website editor from Squarespace, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. Choose your website starting point and customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology. Squarespace Blueprint AI and SEO tools. Start a completely personalized site with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Then easily launch your site and get discovered fast with integrated optimized SEO tools. So you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. Flexible payments. Make checkout seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools and in eligible countries, offer customers the option to buy now and pay later with Afterpay and Clearpay. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to get 10% off the purchase of your first website or domain.